Hi guys, it's me, Professor D, and welcome back to my YouTube channel. On this video, I'm going to be covering gout as promised. If you haven't done so already, I know the video just started, but you know you're gonna like the video. Go ahead, like this video, subscribe, press that red notification button. That is the best way, guys, that you guys can support me in this channel by engagement. Go ahead, share my content on your social media platform or with a friend or a classmate. Don't forget, I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And you guys can catch me on TikTok, Instagram, Facebook. This is the book that I'm going to be um, using to cover gout. So if anyone was wondering, this is a book you guys can get it on Amazon, although it's not necessary. Um, I teach from dozens and dozens and dozens of books, and guys, I don't expect, excuse me, I don't expect you to go out and get every single book that I teach from. It's not necessary. Just make sure that you understand the content. If there's something that you need to go back, go back. This video's, you know, it's recorded. Just press the pause or the. I'm old school, so I call it rewind. I don't know if that's what the young people call it these days. Whatever it is, that little triangle where you go back, do that and get the information you need. All right, guys, let's get started. So here we are. Gout. Let me make this bigger for you. Okay. Okay, so look at what it says. It says... Gout is the most common form of inflammatory arthritis. So let me tell you something, and you're going to see this in a second, but with the gout, that patient is going to have pain, inflammation, tenderness in the joints. And the reason they're having these um, symptoms in the joints, guys, why are you guys seeing that? Okay. The reason you guys are seeing those symptoms in those joints is because there's um, uric acid crystallization that's deposited in the joints. And that's what's causing the inflammation, the pain, the tenderness, where? Within the joints. So let's go, let's keep going. Men are more likely to have this than women. Men are three times more likely to be diagnosed with gout than women are. The incidence of gout increases with age. So the older that you get, the higher your risk for getting gout is. Body mass index, which means the heavier you become, the more your risk increases. Alcohol consumption, I should have underlined alcohol because for testing purposes, let me tell you, they always ask about that. Alcohol consumption, hypertension, and diuretic use. And you guys are going to learn why, but one of the things with those diuretic use when the patient's using those uh, diuretics, they're getting rid of, rid of those fluids, something that stays and accumulates that uric acid, it clumps up, crystallizes, and it causes uh, pain within those joints. Okay, let's keep going. Evidence links the consumption of fructose-rich beverages with the risk of gout for both men and women. Patients with gout have increased risk of cardiovascular disease. NCLEX expects you to know this, guys. There is an absolute um, association, and you need to know that. One study, for example... Gout was implicated as an independent risk factor for acute myocardial infarction in older women. Pathophysiology, what's causing all of this to happen? What's going on? Gout is caused by hyperuricemia, that's increased serum uric acid. Uric acid, guys, look at this. It's the byproduct of purine metabolism. So when purines break down, it creates this, uric acid. You see that uric acid is the byproduct of purine metabolism. Purines are basic chemical compounds found in high concentration of what? Meat products. Let's stop right there. So that already lets us know who's going to be at risk for this. People who are big meat eaters because the breakdown of that meat creates that byproduct of what? Uric acid, which is the culprit. Urate levels are affected by diet, medication, overproduction in body, or inadequate, look at this, excretion by the kidneys. So the kidneys are getting rid of the fluids. It's getting rid of the sodium, the potassium is coming out in the kidneys, but that uric acid is not, right? Hyperuricemia, that serum uh, concentration greater than 6.8, can but does not always lead to urate 
crystal deposition. Where? Being deposited where? In those joints, causing that pain, that inflammation, that redness, that tenderness. All right? The initial cause for the gout attacks occur when macrophages in the joint space phagocytize the crystals. And you know what those macrophages do? Phagocytize to eat up, right? To uh, phagocytize the crystals. Look at this. Through, uh, through a series of immunologic steps, blah, blah, blah. I'm not going to go over all of that. But what's important for you guys to know, um, both alcohol and consumption of large meal, especially red meat, can lead to increased levels of free fatty acid concentrations. And they're also implicated as triggers to acute gut uh, gout attacks. This is important to know. Um, this has been seen on NCLEX too many times for me to count. And very often they're seen as select all that applies. So you guys need to know this. With repeated attacks, accumulation of sodium uric crystals called TOFI are deposited in peripheral areas of the body, such as ding, 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 great toe, the hands and the ear. For testing purposes, normally they ask about the great toe, but I don't write your exams. It could be anywhere. Make sure you know it. Um, renal urate lithiasis, those are the kidney stones with chronic renal disease secondary to urate deposition may develop. Let me make this larger for you to see. Guys, there we go. Primary hyperuricemia uricemia may be caused by severe dieting or starvation, excessive intake of foods that are high in purine, such as shellfish organ meats. You need to know that. Or hereditary. Very often, another one, I don't know why I didn't underline that either because that comes up on uh, testing a lot, but I put a star next to it, the severe dieting. Okay? Other causes, that severe dieting, that patient starving themselves, or having excessive intake, eating way too much of foods that are high in purine. What types of foods are high in purine? Organ meats, such as what? Liver, kidney, or shellfish. Altered renal tubular function, either as major action or as an unintended side effect of certain pharmacologic agents, such as you know, diuretics, thiazide diuretics, furosemide, low do dose salicylates, ethanol, these are medications, guys. Look at what it can do. It can uh, contribute to uric acid under secretion. Under secretion, you know, I can't speak. Under sec, I can't speak. Under excretion, you know, excretion is to get rid of things, right? So if the patient has under excretion, either because they're taking a diuretics, it's, yeah, it's getting rid of the fluid. It's getting rid of the, some sodium. It's getting rid of some potassium, but it's not getting rid of those uric acid that will cause under excretion. And so what happens to the body, they accumulate in the body. Okay. So what this is saying is, regardless of the process that's causing it, but any process that may cause under excretion of that uric acid, which means the body's not getting rid of the uric acid, it's going to accumulate in the body, okay? Clinical manifestations. Manifestations of gout syndrome acute include acute gouty arthritis, recurrent attacks of severe articular and uh, periarticular inflammation. And usually we see this where, where in those joints, joints of the fingers, toe, tophi, that's the crystalline deposits accumulating in the articular tissue, et cetera. Gouty nephropathy. Whenever you see that word nephro, what are we talking about? The kidneys, right? So gouty nephropathy, ren renal impairment, and uric acid urinary calculi. So the patient's having um, those uh, stones that are made of the uric acid. For hyperuricemic people who are going through, excuse me, who are going to develop gout, acute arthritis is the most common early clinical manifestation. That's what, usually the first thing that we'll see. The metatarsopharyngeal joint of the Big toe, we're seeing that big toe again. Make sure you guys know it for gout. Of the big toe is the most commonly affected joint. 
The tarsal area, ankle, knee can also be affected. Less commonly, we'll see it in the wrist, fingers, elbows, uh, that can be affected. Trauma, alcohol ingestion, dieting, medication, surgical stress, or illness may trigger the attack. Guys, this is not the first time we're seeing this. This is either the second or third time, especially with the alcohol, especially with the dieting, especially with the starvation, especially with the medications. We've been told this information before that they are triggers for that patient that has gout. The abrupt onset often occurs at night, awakening the patient with, it doesn't say pain. What kind of pain does it say? Severe pain. Redness, swelling, warmth of the affected joint. Not area, joint, because what's happening is that pain, redness, tenderness that they're feeling, it's going to be in the joint because that's where those uric acid crystallized those deposits go, okay? Early attacks tend to subside spontaneously by itself over three to 10 days, even without treatment. The attack is followed by symptom-free period until the next attack, which may not come for months or even years. Tophi seen in chronic um, tophaceous gout are generally associated with more frequent and more severe inflammatory episodes. So let's look at the medications. What type of medications is this patient gonna be on for gout? A definitive diagnosis of gouty arthritis is established by polarized light microscopy of the synovial fluid of involved joint. So if we want to know 100% beyond a shadow of a doubt that this patient has gouty arthritis versus any other type of arthritis, that's the test that they're going to do. They're going to do the polarized light microscopy of the synovial fluid of whichever joint it is, okay? Acute attacks are managed with, you guys got to know these meds. Colchicine, NSAIDs, or corticosteroids. Let me stop. You see this medication, colchicine? When that patient is having an acute attack, that's going to help manage it. Okay? Colchicine is not for maintenance because we're going to get to the maintenance. You need to understand that colchicine is for treatment of acute attacks. Non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs. Yes, that's going to help with the pain. It's going to help with the inflammation. And of course, corticosteroids, because what do corticosteroids do? They have anti-inflammatory properties. It makes sense. Let's keep going. Once the acute attack has subsided, uric acid lowering therapy should be considered. Xanthine oxidase inhibitors such as allopurinol and euloric are agents of choice. As students, I notice that you guys confuse the two and you have to know the difference because NCLEX expects you to know the difference. And not only NCLEX, other nursing exams such as HESI, ATI. Notice, I'm going to go back for a second because I want you to catch this. It says once acute attack has subsided. That lets us know that the patient is not having an acute attack at the moment. So when they are not having an acute attack, but we're trying to prevent another one from happening, we're trying to delay another one from happening, we're trying to keep maintenance on this disease, on this disorder, that patient will get something such as uh, allopurinol. Allopurinol is not for acute attacks. If the patient is currently having an attack, what do you expect to be ordered? Colchicine. You see the difference between the two? I promise if you're studying this for a test coming up, you're going to be expected to know the difference. Don't say I didn't warn you. Let's keep going. All right. In fact, taking allopurinol reduced the occurrence of gout flares by 20% in one study. It reduced the occurrence of what? Flare-ups. Why? Because this, where are we? This medication, allopurinol, is not for acute attacks. It's for the flare-ups, preventing the flare-ups, delaying a flare-up. If a flare -up, if the patient has an acute attack, what do we expect to be ordered? Again, it's going to be colchicine. Let's keep going. Management between gout attacks need to include lifestyle changes, such as avoidance of purine purine rich foods because remember guys once those purines break down what do they break down into um um what's the word i'm looking for uric acid 
okay? They break down into uric acid. That uric acid cr crystallizes, goes to the joint, and causes pain, redness, inflammation, tenderness. So one of the lifestyle changes is decrease and stay away from those, not even decrease, stay away from avoiding foods that are high in purine, because we know the, the, the byproduct of purines will cause that patient to have another flare up. So avoidance of purine rich foods, such as what? Those organ meats, shellfish, right? Weight loss. Why weight loss? Well, we learned that obesity or gaining weight too fast, that's one of those triggers, right? So we're going to teach them to make sure they keep a lowered weight. Decreasing alcohol consumption, because we know alcohol is one of those triggers. And avoiding certain medications, such as what? That list that was given to us, those salicylates, those um, diuretics, right? And guys, obviously, that's only if the patient's able to. If the patient, for example, the patient has heart failure, they have to take a diuretic. We're not going to withhold that drug, but this is this teaching that you do have to give to the patient um, if the situation applies. Before I get to nursing management, I want to scroll up very quickly because I've said this to you guys a million times and I'm going to keep saying it. Most of your test questions, guys, comes from these tables, these diagrams, these illustrations, these charts, these figures that you never want to look at. All you want to do is read the text. You never want to look at those extra things. And those are where your test questions are coming from. Okay. Look at this. All of this was said to us in the text, but it's so important. The author knows you're going to see this as a test question. They took the time to also put it as in the table. Colchicine, it lowers the deposition of uric acid, interferes with leukocyte infiltration, reduces inflammation, all that good stuff. Make sure you read that on your own. Just go ahead and pause. But look, acute management for our colchicine. Administer when attack begins. Dosage increased until pain's relieved or diarrhea uh, develops because it can have um, these GI um, symptoms, right? For chronic management, causes GI upset in most patients. Again, when it comes to culture scene, we're giving it for what? Acute attacks. Benamed, you're gonna be alert for nausea and rash. And allopurinol, let me move this over so you can see, allopurinol, that's the maintenance one, right? That's the one to prevent or delay those flare-ups. Look at what it says. It interrupts the breakdown of purines before uric acid is formed. And that's how it works as a preventative medication. That's how, guys. Side effects, bone marrow suppression. Well, that's a problem because we know our bone marrow makes our RBCs, which carries hemoglobin, which carries oxygen. So that can make the patient anemic. We know the bone marrow makes our WBCs, which fights infection. So it can make the patient at risk for infection, right? And we know that the bone marrow makes our platelets. So that this can place the patient at risk for what? Bleeding, hemorrhaging. So that lets us know when it comes to this medication, we're going to be looking for those signs and symptoms. We're going to be looking at the CBC, right? Um, let's keep going. Depression, vomiting, and abdominal pain. So these are very important things we have to know about the medication. Now let's move on to nursing management. Severe dietary restriction is not necessary. However, the nurse encourages the patient to restrict consumption of foods high in purine, especially organ meats. How many times have we seen that? and to limit alcohol intake because we know alcohol is one of those triggers. Maintenance of normal body weight should be encouraged. But you have to teach them that um, them being obese, overweight can cause a flare up. In an acute episode of gouty arthri arthritis, pain management with prescribed medications is essential along with avoidance of factors that increase pain and inflammation such as trauma, make sure they're not injuring or or hitting those joints, stress, and alcohol. Guys, that's your God in a nutshell. It's not as hard as you thought, right? That's your God in a nutshell. Let me know what you thought about this video. Let me know what you'd like me to do a, next, a lesson for you on next. Guys, I am making a running list and I'm actually, I'm going by your comments. I'm making these videos by your comments. So um, 
If I haven't covered something yet that you want me to cover, go ahead, leave it in a comment. I will add it to my list. Don't forget, you guys can catch me on TikTok, Instagram, and Facebook. I have audio lessons available for you on my website, nexusnursinginstitute.com. And the best way to support my channel is to engage, comment, like, subscribe, and share my content. Thank you so much for watching this video and you guys will see me on the next video.